appreciate how much it is to be honored today to share in this godly man's life and this sweet family. We have spent many, many times, and I can look out here in the audience and see some of you guys and I've seen here during the weekdays when we gather together to pray for Joe. And we're here to honor him today. And I'd like to share with you uh, a little bit about his life today, although many of you who are friends and family can say so much more. <clears throat> but this, I think, is a, a blessing to all of us as we think about Joe. He was born on uh, July the 18th in 1959 in Corpus Christi, Texas, to Betty Pyle and Dan Gray. And he went on to be the Lord Jesus on Monday of this week. March the 8th, 2021, at Texoma Medical Center due to COVID complications. And Joe graduated from San Marcos Central High School and continued his education at, at Southern Methodist University, pursuing the business and management programs in Dallas, Texas. And Joe was married to his high school sweetheart, Julie. Games on July the 23rd, 1977, San Angelo, Texas, at the First Baptist Church there. And Joe worked as a telecommunication engineer and senior program manager for the Erickson that was previously known as the Nortel Networks for over 40 years. Joe devoted much of his free time to his family, farming, serving within the community and the church. And he has an AKA known as Water Boy. <laughs> he is survived by his parents, Dad and Claude, uh, Claudia Gray, his wife, Julie and his son, Jeremy, his daughter, Jeannie Allen, and son-in-law, Demarcus Allen, five grandchildren, <laughs> Jeffrey Jason Boyd, and, uh, D, uh, DJ and Diamond Allen, and Luca Dean Allen. Joe is also survived by eight sisters, one brother-in-law, aunts, uncles, numerous ne uh, nephews, nieces, and cousins, friends that we consider families, of course, and his extended family, his church, where he couldn't wait for his wife to get ready to dress. He was sitting waiting to come to church on Sunday mornings. He's also survived by Julie's adopted pets. <laughs> One in particular named Ab Abby. Abby. <laughs> I shared uh, some thoughts, of course, with uh, Pastor here and, and Julie and family here a few days ago. I asked him, Do you, could you tell us what was Joe's favorite verse of Scripture? And she shared it. And I'd like to read this one verse in here that is his favorite. But in context, let me just share with you uh, these words. The word is nigh, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God <coughs> raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believeth in the righteousness, and with the mouth <coughs> confession is made unto salvation. For the scriptures say, If a servant believeth in him shall not be ashamed. There is no difference between Jews and the Greeks, for the same word over all is rich unto all that call upon him. And here is this passage. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Joe did that, and I think the question that he would ask us this morning, have you? And if not, I encourage you to. Father, we thank you for this moment that we can come and blend our hearts together and believe and share with this wonderful family how we pray that God in these days ahead, that you would bring healing to this dear family. 
And Lord, although we have questions in our minds, we understand even as Paul would say at the end of his life, I've fought the good fight. I've finished my course. Henceforth there is made up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord will give all of us in that day. In Jesus' name. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper underneath Seven sisters, barely 
Debbie, Pam, Sherry, Diana, Cindy, and Becky. We were always beaten by the girls. <laughs> strong in our family. <clears throat> now we have lost one, and it hurts. Joe was a brother that cared so much about his family and tried to protect everyone. The night on January 29, 2021 at 9.31 p.m., I talked to Joe to see how he was doing. Joe's tried to play it off by saying, it's all going to be okay. During our talk for almost an hour, he mentioned for the first time that he was scared. If you ever knew Joe, he was solid as rock. But that night, he stated he think he thought he was not going to make it. He asked me, Terry, please tell my family I love them. Jeffrey, Jason, Luca, Diamond, DJ, I want to share this with you. This came from your papa. No matter what life brings, you be the best you can be and never give up. Jenny. You will always be my little girl. It's come from dad. I am so proud of you and forever grateful that I have these five grandchildren. That alone has filled my life. Jeremy Daniel. Son, I could not ask for a better son. JD. You have surprised, you have surprised me with all your accomplishments in life. Stay strong and stay focused. Remember our talks, JD. You got this, bud. <laughs> Julie. I know you are hurting, but no, we have been truly blessed with our family and friends. We have the best kids and grandkids. Love them always. And remember, I love you. Josh. To my siblings, stay strong. Joe is preceded in death by his mom, Betty. Uh, rest in peace, big brother. And now I have a, something from the gentleman that we call Pop and Dad. This came from Dan Craig. I became stepfather to Joe when he was eight years old. We immediately <laughs> dropped the step part and had a father-son relationship as good as any father-son could have. For his entire life, I can honestly say Joe and I never had one cross word or disagreement of any kind. <clears throat> Joe learned a very strong work ethic, very young, and kept it all his life. He always was an inspiration to all his siblings and to me as well. When he was a few years older, one of the biggest joys was to ride the trove with me on night shift for the San Angelo Police Department. At that time, I did not realize how much it thrilled him. But for the rest of his life, he took much pleasure telling family and friends about his experience with me on the trove. All the officers I worked with were so impressed with his politeness and his manners. An older officer said to me one night, Dan, I don't know where you got this boy, but he sure is a keeper. True words were never spoken. 
Joe always gave 110% to any job he took on. And his intelligence and resourcefulness led him to excel <coughs> in all his endeavors, whether at work or home. Many people live a longer life, but no one lived a fuller life. Joe loved and respected all family members and friends. He married Julie at a young age, and I gained a daughter number eight because we dropped the in-law from the vocabulary. They raised two of the finest kids anyone has ever been blessed with. You will miss Joe. You will see him in the two of the children, Jenny and Jerry. Joe was a very proud grandpa. He took great pride in all his grandchildren. Although we live many miles apart, Claudia and I from Joe almost every day. He sent many emails and pictures to us detailing all that was going on in his life and the family's life. Although he leaves a big empty spot on earth, he fills one in heaven. We have been blessed greatly to have him in our lives. All of our love from Pop and Claudia. Joe, this is not a goodbye, but we'll see you again. Thank you. First and foremost, we want to thank everyone for attending to celebrate Joe's life and legacy. For you to be in attendance today, we trust that Joe had the same positive influence in your life in some fashion as our family has had the experience, has experienced repeatedly. We also want to thank so many within the body of Christ for enduring our suffering through this difficult trial and helping to carry our burdens. This includes the many who have not had the pleasure of meeting Joe. In fact, we know that the praying body of Christ spanned over 18 countries. So thank you all. Joe, God looked around his garden and saw an empty place. He looked, then looked down upon earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful, for he always takes the very best. He knew that you were suffering. He knew you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well on earth again. He saw the roads were getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, Peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part, part of us went with you the day God, God called you home. I'm now going to share some thoughts on behalf of uh, Jeremy and uh, Jenny. We're here to celebrate our dad's life and legacy, and absolutely nothing short of that. We don't understand the Lord's mysterious ways and why God needed dad so soon, but we do trust in God. We know that he makes no mistakes, and we are grateful for my dad's presence in our lives. We are heartbroken and devastated, but might we ask, where would we be without God in our lives right now? Psalm chapter 34, verse 18 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. So we believe, and our hope remains in Jesus. Dad, we want you to know that you far exceeded our expectations in encouraging, comforting, urging your family to live lives worthy of God. For that we are internally grateful. <coughs> you created the most prevalent legacy known to many, and we would like to share a few things that we will always remember you for. You are absolutely the most selfless man that we know. 
always striving to put everyone in their needs ahead of your own, which often extended outside of your immediate family. In fact, your last calls were to your dad, son, daughter, and wife because you were more concerned about our well-being versus your own painful condition battling with others. You have always done the right thing, whether it was staying late at work to keep the job progressing outside of your responsibilities, volunteering to help your grandson's football team, never missing a family member's graduation, or buying gifts for the underprivileged. You always did it. You taught us exactly what love is supposed to look like. You sacrificed everything of your own so that your family could have a better life and opportunity to achieve what we wanted to go after. You did that well and supported us all 1,000%. Your delight is your family. Although you were flawed and imperfect, you are perfect for us. Every decision you make, you took into account how that decision would impact your family. If we handpicked from God's best candidates, we would still choose you every day. You loved everyone, even when you didn't necessarily love the person. We've always been amazed at how you could put your personal feelings aside and just do the right thing, with no regrets or hesitation. You're so much more than just a father and husband to us. You're our dad, soulmate, our best friend, mentor, our rock, Superman, hero, and one that always put a smile on your face, water boy. Your sense of humor was impeccable, unique, and contagious. We will never forget some of the things we often heard you say, such as, are you okay? What do you think, J.D.? To which Jeremy would always reply, I don't know, what do you think, Dad? Or when talking to Jenny, it was always, hey sis, or how are, you, how are you doing? How are the kids doing? And if you know Dad, you've heard him say, if you're going to do something, make sure that you do it right and give it your all. And one of our personal favorites, Julie, turn off that ceiling fan. It's cold in here. <laughs> While he was sitting on the floor playing with the grandkids. <laughs> You have one that is unfortunately more fitting today. This sucks. And you're right, Dad. Losing you does suck because we love, you, we love and miss you tremendously. However, we will rejoice and be happy for you because we know that you're in eternal, you are in eternal glory with the Lord. You are loved and you are comforted. We know this is true because you accepted Jesus' eternal salvation. You were saved. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8 says, we are confident, I say, and we prefer to be absent from the body and home with the Lord. Dad, we want you to know that your family has our golden tickets to God's dwelling place as well. And we will see you when it's our time and we are called upon. We are overjoyed for you, Dad, because we know that an abundance of eternal treasures awaits you. Mom, Jeremy, Marcus and Jenny, Jeffrey, Jason, DJ, Diamond, Luca, Papa, and Claudia, all of his in-laws, and each one of his siblings. Dad loved each of you abundantly and uniquely. He left us the toolbox to succeed in life, and we will carry his legacy forward. Dad, we want you to know that we will finish out your home you so loved to your meticulous specifications, because we all know how specific you like things. <laughs> so please, stop by to inspect things every once in a while. We look forward to seeing those little glimpses of you around the house. Rest in heaven.
Joe is uh, one of the hardest working people I've ever met. I mean, you can tell that anytime you're around any of the family members. Um, uh, you know, that's how I first met Jeremy. was actually working a little eight by ten cube. We used to call them walk ups. And, uh, you know, I never know how to meet my best friend there. And it turns out, <laughs> years before, he and I actually had to spend time together at a Cowboys game as kids. With my dad and his dad were, were really good friends. And, uh, it's just funny how it all works out, you know. Um, you look back on it at those times, you know. Jeremy had a lot more hair, and I had a lot less of it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's just funny how time flies. But uh, Joe was just, uh, Joe worked so, so hard. Um, you know, we used to joke, it, you know, early bird catches the worm, one, he, he beat the early one. You know, he, he beat everybody into the office, and he always had this red truck. These huge chrome rims and a chrome pinstripe on it, and you'd roll up to work five in the morning, and you thought you was gonna have a drive by, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, he'd beat you there. And, and uh, you know, Jerry and I, we, we you know, we work it, and he'd come by, and you know, which boys in, and uh, you know, come shoot the breeze with us a little bit. And uh, he'd always like to, you know, ink our chains a little bit. You know, Tony's in there, and he'll test it. We had a little. A few laughs, a lot of spreadsheets, uh, a lot of hard work, a little bit of griping sometimes, and uh, just overall, he's a really, just a really fun person to work around, and be around. Um, he's just, you know, like I said, one of the nicest guys ever. And we, we get ready to leave, and he always be there. And he, he always, he was always the last one out. You know, he shuts down the lights, he shut down the door, and he was ready to go. And, and we said, Joe, you coming? You finally leave? And he said, Oh, I'll catch up with you later. And uh, Jeremy and I go out, come out, come back home a little later than usual, and uh, sure enough, he would beat us. You know, he'd, he'd beat us, come, we'd, we'd pull in, we'd think, where's your dad at? Sure enough, two in the morning, here he'd come rolling in. And uh, he's just the hardest working guy, and we'd always mess up mess, and what, you know, with the late night parties at Erickson, we're like, is there a secret nightclub? We don't know about the basement or something. <laughs> um, but Joe's always first person off for a seat at the table, dinner table. Um, Always wanted to come meet with family. He always treated you like family. Didn't matter who you were. You could be a stranger off the street. He uh, he always had a, a spot at the table. The whole family's like that. They're just, uh, I screwed up their names a lot because it's four J Ranch, but makes up like seven now. <laughs> um, there's a lot of J's in there. Um, but always a seat at the table. Always had the food for you ready. <laughs> Don't trust Julie. She says the hot sauce ain't hot because she's lying. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> but, um, this Joe is um, Joe's one of the toughest, hardest working guys I've ever met. But he's also one of the most nice and genuine people you ever worked with. Um, you know, in, inside and outside of the office, you know, at the house, he's always cutting those trees. And he's, he, um, he's always found something else to do and always was working. And he took great pride. And I, I couldn't make it through that front door even though Jeremy and say hi before he had his phone out or his laptop and he had me watching play drills and stuff like that for the boys football and he's like, check out this paint can you <laughs> And he just repeat in slow motion and fast forward and I just watch Jason cream these four kids like um, <laughs> on video. Um, but he was always just about family, hard work. Um, one of the nicest people you ever run to. So like I said, this this world's uh, definitely worse off without him, but you know, we'll, we'll always keep in our hearts. Uh, Every time you drive by the house, you can just see all the hard work they put into it and all the hard work you put into it. Um, cutting every one of those trees by hand. I ought to know better than the ball in this kid's here, honestly. Or no, you need it. Um, but Joe, you'll be really missed. Um, you know, every time I hang out with Jeremy, I see, I see you and in, in, in the whole family. Um, we'll, we'll miss you tremendously. Thanks. i
Psalms chapter 1. It's not strange to me, but it might be strange to some people why King David would start out the Psalms with start out the way he's doing this one. He's talking about the way of the righteous man. It says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. That's a picture of Job. That's a picture of a righteous man. One that's already been shared and has trusted the Lord as his personal Savior. And who tried to live a life according to the Lord's will. You know, I've been Job's pastor now for just a few months. Loved every moment. And I plan to minister to the families from now on, the part of us. But you know, Joe's physical, physical body is still here. But God has got the best of it. God has received his spirit and his soul. And they shall be with him until he comes back for the rest of us. We will all be in the resurrection. The Bible says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's him. And we shall be risen to, to follow him and fellowship with them that have gone on before us. Joe was under a coma for a long time. I had the privilege of texting Joe the night before. You know, I, had, I had quite a conversation. He was in the hospital. <coughs> And, and we talked for probably 30, 40 minutes on a cell phone, not on a phone, but on a text. I treasure that time. I know where Joe was going. We didn't know where he was going now, but we just knew where he was going. While Joe was under a coma, I have to wonder, I did wonder, what was going on in Joe's mind. Joe, Joe was there. Joe is just under a coma. He's resting. My feeling is, and I pray that this is what happened, that Joe was having a continuous conversation through his spirit with the Spirit of God. They were talking back and forth until he breathed the last breath of life. This is one of the great pleasures of the Christians when they can't talk, when they can't focus. The Spirit of God steps in for them. <coughs> Others words that even Job didn't understand. But they were communicating the whole time. The Spirit made in the second. God created man in the beginning to have fellowship with him. God would not allow Job to lay there all that time without having communication. Or sometime with somebody. And that was God himself. Job has entered the gates of heaven. The Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. I believe that. Where the streets of pure gold, the gates of huge pearls, where everything is precious stones, more than we can imagine. The Bible talks about that. Chapter John, John chapter 14, where the, the disciples were gathered around the campfire with Jesus. And Jesus noticed that they were kind of disappointed, kind of discouraged. Well, it finally hit them that Jesus was leaving. And they wanted to go too. And Jesus said these words. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto me. Where I am, there you may be also. What a promise from God. Amen. Sitting around the fire, telling us to the twelve disciples, he says, I'm going to prepare a house, a mansion in heaven. It's got many, many rooms to it. When I get there, I'm going to build this place called the kingdom of God. And one day, you're going to be in it. The kingdom of heaven is going to come down from heaven in the final time and sit down on the earth right over where old Jerusalem is now. And we're going to dwell there. All the Christians are going to join God, Jesus, all those who have gone before us. We're all going to be there together, living for all eternity. What a joy, what a promise God made to his disciples. One day, all Christians are going to dwell in that city. He has given us the same invitation today. He's told us if we trust the Lord, if we trust Jesus as our personal Savior, don't trust anybody else for our salvation. Don't trust anybody else for where we're going. So if you trust me, you can spend eternity with me. It's a simple invitation. It's as simple as A, B, C. A is for accept. Accept the fact that Jesus died for you. And you personally. He died on the cross, so you don't have to die there. You don't have to pay for your sin there. Jesus paid for your sin. Accept that fact. B is for believe in the precious name of Jesus as the Lord and Master. He's the one that's the Savior of the world. No other way to be saved but through the blood of Jesus. That's B, believe. And C is confess. Confess with your mouth once you believe in your heart. Once you believe that and you know that Jesus has you, then you begin to confess that to others. Tell the people about Jesus that more people may know the way to heaven. Simple. Accept, believe, and confess. Live your life with Jesus. This is a mandate because you've joined an army. You've joined the Lord's army once you've done that. And you're out against the devil and all his enemies trying to keep you from sharing what you already know about Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He didn't die for his own. He didn't have it. He went for us. While he was on the cross, he named me. He named you as the blood just ripped out of the ground. Just saved by the precious blood of Jesus. Joe had given his life to the Lord a long time ago. Joe lived his life best he could, serving him. Joe had finally found a place here at Bethel Baptist Church where he could sit and enjoy a service and worship, a place where he was wanting to serve. That's Joe, <coughs> wanting to serve. We were waiting for that time when we would get him assigned to a project, get him assigned to doing something, helping us out. He left a legacy for his children, his grandchildren, a legacy that they can remember forever. Oh, what stories you could tell. What stories they could tell as they already have today. You know, it has to live on, folks. This is the remains. Joe's not here. He's gone to be with the Lord. But his legacy's here. His spirit's still here as he speaks to us, through us. It's a great testimony to be told far and wide by each one of you about how good a friend he was to you. I wish we had time for everyone to stand up and talk, but they don't. And each one of you have a testimony of your own. If you go to a cemetery, most cemeteries will have gravestones. And on a gravestone, they'll have a date of birth and a date of departure. In between, there'll be a little dash. That little dash is your memory. What happened between the time he was born and the time he died? All compressed like a computer. 
All the questions are a little dash. You have in that dash. Your memory's all in that dash. Next time you go to the cemetery, you look at that. You say, there, there I am. There I am. I knew that person. That's my life. Joe's not really dead. I know that may seem strange to you, but the Bible talks about death and just being asleep. It's a time when Joe went to sleep. And he woke up in the arms of Jesus. He's not really dead. The actual word for sleep is sleep. In the Greek, it's not death. Death is too final. Death, you think about it, that's it. But it's not. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 says, I would not have you be ignorant, brethren. God doesn't want us to be ignorant of the fact of death concerning them which are asleep, that he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now, I'm going to stop there for a minute. It didn't say don't sorrow. It said don't sorrow like those that have no hope. There are people that go to funerals like this, and they don't have any hope of ever seeing their loved one again. But we do. So we're not supposed to be sorrowing and grieving like we'll never see Job again. We will. We will if we know the Lord. But if we believe, this is the key, that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which are asleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. I love that verse. I love that verse. We're going to be with Joe again. We're going to be with all our other lovers. We, most of us have people that are gone. Most of us have attended funerals before. And I pray that the preacher preached about hope. I pray that there are just opportunities for people right there to change their lives. Get on track. Accept, believe, and confess the Lord Jesus. That's what Joe wants. I know that's what he wants. The little time I spent with him, I. And we talk about church. We talk about our personal lives. <coughs> Joe left us an example. Let's be sure and follow it. He will live again when Jesus comes to set up his kingdom. All going to be there. Those that have trusted Accept it, believe, and confess about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Not about Joe. We're here to celebrate his death because it's a good thing that he's with the Lord. We don't know how Joe would have come out. We don't know how Joe would have lived. But we know he's living now. He's living with joy and happiness that's beyond our comprehension because he's seen the face of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to the close of the service. Father, we pray that we've honored you today. This has been a memorial for Job and family. But it's been all about you. We thank you for dying on the cross for us personally. We thank you for giving your life that each one of us could live without eternity with you. Lord, bless these people that are here today. If there's just one that doesn't know you as a personal Savior, I pray that they'll accept you today. That they'll believe in you today. They'll begin to confess you today. If just one did that, Joe's life would have been all worth it. Lord, we commit him to you and ask you to bless this family. So sweet and so loving of him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
the city like a siren song Wailing over the rooftops the whole night long Saw a shooting star like a diamond in the sky Must be someone's soul passing by These are the streets where we used to run Where your pop is from These are the days where you become what you become These are the streets where the story is told The truth unfolds and darkness settles in Oh, shine your light down on me Lift me up so I can see Shine your light when you're gone Give me the strength to carry on, carry on No wanna be a hero, just an everyday man Trying to do the job, the very best he can
book of Genesis with God creating this world of ours. And we know that in the process of time, you give man an opportunity, he will do exactly the opposite of what God wants us to do. And that's why the gospel is called the gospel of the good news is because God is fixing all of these things in between the times. And it's amazing to see how that God's word is not by accident. That every way it is put together in the prophets, in the Psalms, in the New Testament, I believe that God put it together just like he wanted it. And whenever he closes it with the book of Revelation, he writes these words. He says this, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among His people, and He will live with them, and they will be His people, and God Himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. The one sitting on the throne said, Look, I'm making everything new. Then he said to me, Write this down. For what I tell you is trustworthy and is true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the spring of water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all of these blessings. And I will be their God and they shall be my children. Our heads. Heavenly Father, it's been a good day. They are celebrating the life of Job. Father, today, right here, we commit these remains to the ground. For the dust thou art, dust thou shalt return. In the beginning, you molded man out of the clay. Today he returns. Father, we thank you for the life that Joe has had. We thank you for the testimony, the legacy that he leaves behind. That's right. We know he'll be remembered by all. Father, I ask that you enjoy the time with him till the time we all get together. That role is called up yonder. We're going to be there. Reunite. There'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no more separation. I will live with you and others that we have loved so much forever and ever. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
gone crazy Grandpa Take me back to yesterday When the line between right and wrong Didn't seem so hazy Did lovers really fall in love to stay Stand beside each other Everything is changing fast 
don't know And Grandpa Let's wander back into the past And paint me the picture Of long ago Lovers really fall in love Beside each other, come what may. This promise really something people kept, not just something they would say and then forget. Families really bow their heads to pray. Daddies really never. I never once back down from a punch Well, I take it square on the chin Well, I found out fast A bully's just that You've got to stand up to him So I didn't cry When I got a black eye as bad as it hurt, I just grinned But when tough little boys grow up to be dads They turn into big babies again you Scared me to death when you took your first steps Well, I'd fall every time you fell down your first day of school I cried like a fool And I followed your school bus to town Well, I didn't cry When old Yeller died At least not in front of my friends Oh, and tough little boys Grow up to be dads they turn into big babies again Well, I'm a grown man But as strong as I am Well, sometimes it's hard to believe How one little girl with little blonde curls Can totally terrify me If you were to ask My wife would just laugh She'd say I know all about men And how tough little boys Grow up to be dads They turn into big babies again I know one day I'll give you away And I'm gonna stand there and smile But when I get home And I'm all alone Well, 
I'll sit in your room for a while Well, I didn't cry when old Yeller died At least not in front of my friends Bone tough little boys grow up to be dads They turn into big babies again Tough little boys grow up to be dads. They turn into big babies again. Peace.